Welcome back to Soon Over Traveler for part two of Married at First Sight, season 11, episode 11. Hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell so you know when I come up with new stuff. Remember everyone, it is free to subscribe. Don't be afraid to support me. I need you guys. Let's continue on with Olivia and Brett. I don't know where this is going, but Brett is already annoying me. Olivia and Brett sit down with Dr. Viviana and they talk about their main concerns. Olivia's main concern is where they're going to live and that he owns his own house and that they may be an obstacle for their future. And Brett is like, oh, I'm so irresponsible. Like, Brett, can you just take the day off from being a sarcastic prick? I think if Brett didn't own his house, it would- I'm so irresponsible. It's Stupid equity. Ugh, what was it? <laughs> no, not the time for the sarcasm. <laughs> Dr. Viviana handles the situation well and states, don't worry about the living situation just yet, which is understandable. He owns a house. That's not the end all be all, Olivia. And that's not the end all be all, Brett. You can always rent the house out and still look for another property that you both can live in. This is not a main concern right now, unless you're making it an issue. They then move on to discuss one of Brett's major concerns, which is children. And Dr. Viviana explains it perfectly. I get the sense when we discussed this when I first met you that this was a, under the right circumstances, under healthy circumstances, you know, a loving relationship, that it could be something that would happen. There are a lot of women I know who are unconcerned with the idea of children. But if the right circumstances came along, they would be willing for the right person. I'm telling you now, Brett, that she does not have a problem with PDA. She has a problem with you, and she does not like you. During their conversation with Viviana, we start to see that Brett's sarcasm is really taking a toll on her mental security because she can't distinguish sincerity from a joke. So they start to talk about sex, and Olivia's skeletons start to pour out. Look, I wouldn't want to have sex with Brett. Legit. How does he even connect with people? Oh right, he doesn't. He sits at home drinking beer and playing video games like a college frat boy. Olivia is probably worse than Karen though. Yes, I said it. She not only wants the man to initiate sex, she doesn't like to be touched it seems. What kind of mixed signal debauchery is this? It's nice to know Brett likes to earn smiles. I actually think that is a genuine statement. I got in, I got on Henry before about his twitches, and this episode, everyone has a twitch. Brett's right eye, Olivia's upside down mouth. These people are stressed. So, let's take a pause and look at some pictures of Olivia and how over the situation she really is. Haha, -ha, Jawsome. Brett needs somebody who gets his jokes. These two don't meld well. They both need someone to make them feel secure. They do not do that for each other. Um, I'd like you to work on a little bit when we're sitting down and talking and having these serious conversations. Sure. Is how you look at me. Sometimes I'd look over like to see what you were going to answer and it's just kind of like you're sitting there looking at me like sarcastically. I feel like your face in that moment, you're not taking it seriously. What's a sarcastic look? Now, Brett, you know what a sarcastic look is. The comment was just sarcastic and defensive. Is it me or is Brett's voice just annoying for a man? It sounds whiny like his personality. And sometimes I feel like you just hold back and don't say what you really want to say. I disagree. Okay, elaborate. I mean, I think you may feel that way, but I'm not holding back what I want to say. Is that true though? Because I feel like there are times when you don't say things or you have like a, a beauty pageant answer where it's like, you're going to say this politically correct answer. In this moment, we realize that everything that everyone has been saying to Olivia about Brett, Olivia has taken to heart and their words along with Brett's actions have made Olivia put up a wall. We can now see that in her past relationships, she was made to feel unimportant. 
This coupled with her reaction and questions on the honeymoon about what his plans were when they got back to New Orleans and had he been dating before they married. Someone in Olivia's past made her feel very underappreciated. And she tends to ask questions that are like beating a dead horse. So on both sides, I can see a lot of frustration. So finally, Olivia and Brett go out on a date. And after watching their interaction in this scene, I'm convinced that Olivia has completely checked out of this relationship. Even if Brett wanted this to work, he has no chance. And in all honesty, I don't really think Olivia wants a husband or a marriage. She just wants a tag along person that does everything that she wants to do. Do you think we're in a good spot or you think we need to go back and hash it out? What do you think we need to do? Oh, I don't think we need to hash anything out. I think it's been hashed. So you think that we've resolved the things we brought up yesterday? There is no resolution. What do you mean? Like there's no resolution to a problem of perception. All we can do is continue to do what we're doing and, you know, stick to it if this will be its own reward. <laughs> Did you see that eye roll at the end? Let's move on to one of my happier couples, Amani and Woody. Uh, my heart lifts with the sound of their name. Amani and Woody stay talking about morning breath and liking each other through it all. They also have questions posed to them by Dr. Viviana. And Amani expresses that she enjoys the little things Woody does for her, like making breakfast and putting toppings on her tacos. Pun intended. Woody enjoys that Amani listens without judgment. Amani then pulls out a question from Woody's pocket and looks at the camera like, I know y'all didn't just give me this question. You wanna pull out the pocket? It's on you. Mm-hmm. Wow. What is it? What is it? Um... So what's your favorite sexual position? <laughs> oh yeah, and why? <laughs> if you want to know the answer, you're going to have to go and watch the show, everyone. They then move on to the question of what exactly is one of the things Woody had to get over? And he talks about his father and how the relationship is not good. In that although he has grown and wishes to not get back his old father that he had when he was nine, he does wish to know him now. But that bridge, he thinks, is just not there. All in all, he has two new dads with Amani. After that deep conversation, I'm sure Woody is ready to go home and try out those new moves with Amani. We meet Amani and Woody back at the house and we walk in on them having a conversation about a dog. I don't know what they going to do about this dog situation, but Amani wants a dog. But it seemed like a really long conversation. And Amani is delusional. What she think the dog is? A cat? Talking about spraying it with water to train it? Woody is basically saying he will make time for a baby he not making time for no dog. So if you want help with that dog, you better wait for the baby, Amani. Amani and Woody in the segment with their question game. And they are so cute. They honestly always leave me on a positive note. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, get up. <laughs> mm. 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 Mm, my uh, I'm not with you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching a review of Married at First Sight. I really appreciate you stopping by. I really appreciate the people who have subscribed, and I hope that more people will join them in the subscribing to my channel. 
I will be starting a foreign television show finally. I have all the footage I need. So I really hope you get are interested and that you enjoy the new show.